All right, folks, we'll call this meeting to order the Board of Selectmen uh, regular meeting for Monday, March 15th. If you're able to, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, but liberty, justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Uh, we will now open public session. If any members of the public wish to address the board at this time, please state your name and address for the record. Is there anyone who'd like to speak this evening? Going once. going twice. We will close public session and move on to the approval of the regular minutes for March 1st, 2021. Do we have a motion? Move that we approve the minutes of the Board of Selectmen meeting of March 1st. Thank you, Mark. Is there a second? We'll second it. Discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, look for approval of the budget workshop meeting uh, minutes for March 4th. Is there a motion? Move to the approval. We'll make meeting. a motion. Second. Go ahead, Mark. Sorry, I thought Ed's made the motion, but I move we approve the minutes of March 4th workshop. I'll, I'll second it. All right. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention motion carries. Uh, lastly, the budget workshop uh, meeting minutes for March 8th, 2021. Is there a motion? Move that we approve the we'll minutes motion. for the of March 8th. Okay, uh, Ed beats you this time, Mark. Do you want to second? Okay, well, I will second his motion then. I thought Mark <laughs> won, actually. Oh, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm hearing Ed in my right ear, so. All right, so any discussion? No? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention. Motion carries. We do not have any unfinished or tabled business at this time. We will move on to resignations and appointments. Uh, Kimmy, are you aware of any uh, resignations that came in? I'm not, Scott. Okay. Uh, Mark, any appointments? Uh, no, but I have a, a question. There were two vacancies on the Conservation Commission before. And I believe I yes. nominated someone. Yes, yeah, so there should only be one, right? Uh, that's my question. Uh, I believe it should be one unless there was another resignation. No, I believe it is one, and there must be an error. So we'll put that down for one uh, for the Conservation Commission. Um, Sally's on her way here, so I don't know if there's any appointments um, for that side. All right, moving on to item B, consideration of recreation, recreational and leisure services summer concert series in partnership with Ryder Production, hosting of event and approval of the alcohol use. Kimmy, do you have any comments or input for that or is uh, who's on the line? Okay. I think um, Ryder Production is on the line. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, you want me to? Um, What's that? Oh. Oh, Sally is still mm -hmm. muted. Hi. Um, hi, everybody. It's Sally Ryder with Ryder Productions. Um, I thought Christine Vincent would be here this evening presenting this. I'm glad if she's not. 
push um, the I don't down. see his skin as on. Let's just table it. Yeah, I, I wonder if we should table it because Christine's, she's not on. Is that correct? Well, I, I can get her on, um, Scott, because it's kind of important that we, um, in timing, that we, okay. um, so um, if you want to just, I'll, I'll mute and I'll call her. Is she a full right. part of this this evening? All right, that's fine. Just let us know if you could um, get her on. We'll move ahead and come back here. Thank you. All right. Consideration of approval for budget 21-22. Kimmy, in John's absence, we'll um, go to so, you. So um, the agenda in front of you is asking for a, to send the Board of Selectmen budget and um, the resolution is already prepared with the language. Um, so the following resolution is prepared for the Board of Selectmen to transit its budget to the Board of Finance. The resolution may be amended as deemed appropriate by the Board of Selectmen. The proposed resolution of the 2021-2022 budget to the Board of Finance is as follows. Whereas the Board of Selectmen is required to present a budget to the Board of Finance for the fiscal year 2021-2022, whereas various revenue are included in the budget to offset expenditure including intergovernmental and local revenue, and following a review of the financial management budget, the 2021-2022 Board of Selectmen budget is recommended at fifteen million five hundred twenty nine thousand and seven and four dollars, and whereas the selectmen proposed budget we did not have a budget to be like a two point five two percent of the twenty 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 one town budget of eleven million seven thirty eight thousand and seven and seven and sixteen dollars. So for the revenue budget, um, I have one question. Taxes is seven hundred thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. um, the intergovernment revenue is six million dollars, six million nine hundred twenty-nine thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars. But the local. So it's it, so it's six million six twenty-nine. Oh, uh, 9, 29. 29. I'm sorry? It's, it's the same number. Oh, all right. But the local, What's... the local departmental revenue, that one is free. Um, because of the, we got a notice from East Granby, they got to cancel the um, dispatch services with us. They are going to cancel? Yes. So the the line um, for the local departmental revenue is going to be 605, $605,002. It's $15,000 less. Okay. Wow, that's all they were paying? Jeez. They got a good deal. Yeah, what are they using? All right. So the total number? Total number will be eight million two hundred thirty four thousand eight hundred and eighty two dollars. Okay. Uh, general fund revenues. Okay, next page. Expenditures. And for the <coughs> general fund expenditure for the admin it will be it will nothing else changed on the agenda. So it will be four million eight hundred thirty eight thousand one hundred twenty six dollars. For the personal and property protections, it will be two million nine twenty thousand four hundred eighty dollars. For the public work and environment is three million Two hundred forty-eight thousand seven hundred and seventy-three dollars. 
for the rivalry recreation and social services would be one million twenty seven thousand seven hundred and five dollars so the subtotal is twelve million thirty five thousand and eighty four dollars the capital is one point eight five million the debt services is one million six hundred thousand six hundred and twenty dollars so the total Board, board of Selectmen budget sent it to the Board of Finance will be $15,529,000 and $7,004. Okay. All right. And then the for other the, funds. For the other funds budget, for the DOC fund, it will be 17200 for the recreation event will be $584,584. For the sewer utility will be $298,644. For the capital equipment and improvement will be $2,404,577. For the uh, education quality and diversity will be $1,032,236. For the solid waste fund, will be $147,000. And the detail of the capital improvement program is in the budget document. Gotcha. Okay. So at this point, to follow Robert's rules, we'll uh, read the proposed resolution, then I'll look for a second, uh, and then we'll have discussions. So the proposed uh, resolution reads, whereas the Board of Selectmen is required to present a budget to the Board of Finance for the 2021-2022 fiscal year, and whereas the various revenues are included in the budget to offset expenditures, including intergovernmental and local revenues, and whereas following the review of the proposed town manager's budget, the 21-22 Board of Selectmen budget is recommended at $15,529,704. And whereas the Selectmen's proposed budget meets the guideline uh, budget to reflect a 2.52% uh, over the 2021 uh, town budget of 11 million uh, 738,716. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen forward the proposed 21-22 revenue budget uh, to the Board of Finance consisting of the following items that were read uh, previously, the general fund revenues totaling 8,234,000 882 general fund expenditures totaling 15 million um, dollars um, and that the Board of Selectmen forward the proposed 21-22 other funds budget to the Board of Finance along with a 22-31 uh, capital improvements program consisting of the following uh, dog fund recreation events, sewer utility, capital equipment and improvement, educational quality and diversity, uh, solid waste fund, and the 22 to 31 capital improvements program. Is there a second? Second. Okay, let's have discussion. Anybody? on the board just um give me uh i think i looked briefly but it looks like all the changes were made um the dog fund is back down to ten thousand um the water is down to nine thousand to to help fund the farmington valley health and then on uh, the clerk fees and building fees are those back to last year's numbers the revenue side yes yeah, um, the town clock fee is two hundred thousand, and the building permit is one hundred fifty thousand. One hundred and fifty thousand. 
Okay, so those are back to zero increase. Okay. So I think those are all the changes, questions I had. Where, wasn't there another? I thought you had another question. No. no. Okay. No. Uh, we do have the chairman of the Board of Finance here as well. So I'll recognize Mr. Gorka. Any other second? Okay, thank you. Um, in fact, you're loud enough. Go ahead. All right. Um, I'm here because I put some thought to uh, the new item that we've included within this year's budget in the past. We've uh, funded through the health plan, which is the open. Uh, we know from the actuary that we have started increasing at least for the next few years. Uh, contribution we have to make. Uh, the money goes into a trust fund which grows into the market. Um, currently, we're 20% funded. What I'm going to suggest is that uh, I think it would make a great deal of sense to move some money from the general fund which sits in cash and more cash-like instruments because of uh, the restrictions placed on government rules. Uh, from there, we're, we end up through there, the taxes have been put basically next year 400 some thousand going up to five and then 600,000 further out into this, the OPEP fund post-employment benefit expenditure trust fund. It would make more sense to take money that's running for the bill and move a portion over directly into the trust fund for the transfer of this year with the upcoming budget. And we have to work out the legal language so we're okay with that, but it's a transfer from the general fund directly to the open trust fund, which at that point will start picking up the earnings increases that are a significant, anticipated to be significant, significantly better than what we earn in cash. Uh, I suggest the figure will be two million because over the next four years. Besides what's in this budget, we have next year 400,000 that's really due for this year, including 431. I suggest we will transfer that later this year if we have no further additional appropriations. In June, I request that the selectmen ask for that transfer and finance approval. And with this budget, to plot $2 million into that fund, that will allow us to pull that growing expenditure out of the operating for the next few years and would hit when there's a debt fall off in fiscal 27. Um, I talked to the actuaries, I talked to the key fiscal people, local works. Um, to me, it would just make sense as a bill we have to pay. But paying it up front, at this point, we we'll take up the earnings, and other ways that cash is going to earn less sitting where it sits now, and would help us to keep the bill rate increase in fiscal 23 and 24 lower than we currently anticipate they might be. So it's a win win all around, and it's fiscally prudent. It makes no sense to not do it in fact. So let me ask, how does that affect the um, motion that was made? Do we I think you deal with that motion in, would add to it a trans this transfer from general fund over? But not till June though, right? Or do it now? Two million now with this budget, mm -hmm. if the budget is approved, the four hundred and thirty one or whatever number we have available. Be a transfer request from the board of selectmen to the board of finance so we can transfer. That gets us caught up through what is part to the actuaries, what the contributions look 
like between now true fiscal twenty-six and it brings us to fiscal twenty-seven. So <clears throat> I'm sorry. Go ahead. So do we not make contributions then for the next four years or do we make revised contributions? The actuary it said that if we we if they don't this is what we're doing. Pre pre paying paying ahead these contributions, those numbers will come out so that Every two years, when they do the actual report, they'll update those numbers. But they basically would consider the first 2.4 million having been paid. And then, um, would it make sense for somebody to kind of clearly define what OPEP is? Maybe Kimmy could do that. Kimmy or Mike, for the people on the. Uh, you know, that are watching. I've been dying with the acronym there, too. Mm. <laughs> you want to do it, Mike? Or? No, that's more for me. Okay, me, do you want to define what OPEB is being our finance person? O-P-E. Um, yeah. or B. Uh, The acronym stands for Other Post Employment Benefits. It in, does it include the health? It's not the OPAD. Go ahead. Um, so the OPAD is, it does stand for the Other Post Employment Benefits. Um, it's accounted for the health insurance that we, uh, that we offer to the retiree after their retirement. Um, this is a uh, liability in the future. So um, what we are doing right now for the OPEP fund is to build up the assets to fund the later liability. But currently, we do we do have retiree in that. Um, in, in currently, we do have retiree that is using our ins health insurance. So uh, we we are due. So this is not just accumulating the um, future liability, but also um, the current expenditure as well. So that's what the fund is for. Mm -hmm. and, and Kimmy, that's for both um, <clears throat> town employees and uh, Board of Education school employees, is that correct? Yes, for the full town town, the town size plus the Board of Ed employee. Okay, and, and is there a fund, that funding does not, there's no funding that comes from the Board of Ed's budget for this, is that correct? Uh, now, this year, this year, the Board of Ed's budgeted their portion of the OPEC contributions. So, uh, our size is about 89,000, um, 89,000 for hours. The Board of Ed is about 253000 It's in their budget. Okay. So, so do, do we extract that from their budget then? No. Oh, because Not it's then. already been agreed to come out of the general fund. Yeah, sorry. The, yeah. Um, I yeah, think so the, the number that... 21, so fiscal 22's number is the 431 that mm -hmm. I talked about. Yep. And then 23, 24, 25, and 26 basically sum up to 2.0. And are those, are those um, calculations for those years up to 2027 already actuarially computed? Yes, they go okay. 20 okay. years out. Okay. So it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a debt certain. Well. It'll adjust each year. It's just like the pension that will adjust each year. That that will take out the majority of it. And then when I spoke to the actuary, what she said was, well, you could find in the last year there could be a little bit due, you could be a little bit paid ahead. It could right, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. But but in essence, what you're doing is paying off the, the amount of debt that would have occurred in the budget process for all of those years. So we'll be, you're I'll paying ahead. Yeah. To get it out of the budget so that we can get it out of the bill, right? Right, right, right. 23, right. 24, 25, 26. So 
we've got to pay this liability anyway. Right. It makes sense to do it now because it's going to um, minimize the mill rate increases in future years, if, if any. And, and in concept, that it should grow faster than cash. Right. 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 So yeah. two million will be two million in two years or four years, but if we put it in the fund, it should it should grow greater than that, right? Right. That makes a lot of sense. It's a great idea. Glenn or Mark, do you have any questions, comments? Oh. I just got yes. Well, I'm, I'm, I know that. Uh, Mark, uh, 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 Mike's just clarifying something. I think from Town Hall and Peter Lee, you can get a little bit of clarification too. But I believe one point to consider is both with the pension and both with the OPEC. The current contracts are less generous than the previous contracts okay. from the past. So that's why these numbers will, will stabilize um, as time goes on, as people pass away and move out of the system this uh, OPED fund, uh, it's a liability we've had on the books for quite a while uh, since the Accounting Standards Board uh, said that we had to set up this fund. And while we've been trying to catch up with it, uh, we are uh, have been underfunded for a while. So if we have the ability to catch up on our funding, I think that's a, a wise use of our current resources. Okay. Thank you. Glenn, do you have any comments or questions? Yeah, so I, I'm not sure I quite follow the logic of it'll keep the mill rate down because if the money's in the general fund to be spent, does it really matter if we spend it now versus we spend it per year over the next however many years it is? I, I'm, I'm not... Let it's, me have this a, it, it's kind of a big move. To, I mean, this seems like it's being sprung on us without any... Um, Really, you know, detailed exhibits or anything, and, and again, I'm, you know, I'm just not going that that there's a huge difference between spending it now or spending it later. So, but maybe maybe Mike can help with that. Yep, let me have Mike give you. It comes down to where you put it. If it's in cash now, if you keep it and then feed it from the general fund, it's earning peanuts in cash versus in the trust fund where it's in the equity market. Is it, is it making the money that it's going to make in the place that it's being transferred to? Does that help, Glenn? Uh, in theory, yes. So, I mean, what's, do we have any idea of the order of magnitude of the, the impact of doing it then? So, what's, what's the upside? We just go ahead, Mike. Well, with the work, if you're talking about on the mill rate side, the worksheet that I'm using, I'm looking to pull mill rates that are in the twos down below two. And that 400000 a year going in is basically 1% in taxes. In, 
you know, but what you're, what, what, what you're saying is the, the fund will grow faster if we put it in earlier. And that's, that's the question I'm asking is what is, how much is faster over the next however many years it is that we're going to eat it up? Well, you're, I don't know that you assume great for the OPEP fund. Uh, it's in the water. But if you look on the pension side, I think it's uh, 6 percent, something like that. So it's that versus uh, less than 20 percent of that, perhaps, on a rate for cash. So it's, in that case, five times the earnings. It's, it's just a matter of which instruments you can park it in, and that's the problem with the restrictions on cash and cash-like investments. Any other questions, Glenn? I guess I'm good for now. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So, Michael, how do I change the? Motion. I think you take the motion that you have and then, then we'll make another motion. Take a separate motion. And two, it's a transfer of two million from general fund to the open trust. Okay. Don't move the motion now. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> have we already moved our motion? Yeah. We have, yeah. Yep. And we have a second and now we have one. So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 OK. Opposed? No. Abstention? Motion carries, 4 to 1. OK. Now with the second motion, um, anybody want to do that? <laughs> moving. So we would move, uh, the motion is to uh, move $2 million from the general fund to OPEB, right? Is there a second? Do you have to, do you have to with, with, this, uh, with the fiscal 22 budget? With the fiscal 22 budget. So moving $2 million from the general fund to OPEB with this fiscal 22 budget. That is the motion. So moved. Okay, sir, second. He, he, he made the motion. Okay. okay. Well, Mr. Might. Chairman, I, I object uh, to consideration of the motion. Okay. Uh, discussion? So, so how, how do we actually do this? This is when, it, when the town votes on the budget, they're vo also voting on this move? <laughs> Have to be done by a town vote. Yes. Yes. For the, yes. Would it be a question on the referendum? Does it need to be because it's part of the budget. Wouldn't need to be. So, so when you do your budget presentation, this is part of the presentation. Okay. Yeah. And, and Kimmy, any thoughts on on this? Um, our current um, our current investment revenue for the cash side is um, is low because of the low interest rate is less than one percent. Um, but our uh, OPEP assets and our pension assets is doing much better. It's around six point five percent. So um, if the board, the board decided to, um, I agree with the I agree um, with with the move because it's better use of the resources, you put it in a pool that actually have a greater investment return. Also will help um, increase the future couple of years um, expenditure in the budget, we will, which will help the meal rate. Okay. So, so this is about oh, just shy of what, 1% of our budget? A year, if we look at, if we think about four, four, four hundred, right, four fifty. Oh, the 
the possible earnings yet. Right. right. Is, is there any reason that we should not do this, Kemi? Well, the um, because we just issue a bond and we just pass it. Um, I think this will qualify a notification that I need to send it to the bond council to um, to uh, to notify our. Um, it is one of the events that qualify to notify the um, MSRB um, the bond market. And it may affect our future bond ratings if we're going to issue out just because we lower our fund balance. But our fund balance this last year, it was just much more than our previous years. I don't think we will have a huge impact, even though when we go out again for another one, which we will. All right, Mike. Yeah. My understanding is that when they look at the at reserves, they look at all the reserves, not only general fund, but a little pension, the whole that deals the whole picture. So they look at the whole picture. So in this case, it's it's really a move from one pocket to the other. Making next to nothing to something where we're anticipating at a rate of six, whatever. How how um, variable is that that interest rate? I mean, is because I, I assume you're you're somewhat limited in what you can invest in, so you're not you're not buying you know penny stocks or you're not buying. It, it's bond funds and, and equities, and like uh, last year, funding for the pension and come down as of June 30, but that's because of the shutdowns last spring. Right. And at that point, we were, I think, as John said last week, we were 80% funded. The obligation, the full obligation as of last June 30 was $22 million for the pension. January 30th, we had $22 million in the pension. Right. Plus one. Well, so it had come basically from the 80 up to 100%. And that's because of the movement of the market. Well, but that's that's what I'm saying is you know what if we what if we hit it hit a doldrums in the market how how you know your rate is going to get well the one percent will be less than two one what's in what's in there can go down right right but it isn't I'm I'm just I'm not saying that you're yeah. but it's not it's not like you're in a whole bunch of of, of equities you're in funds that are. Well, who, who, maybe Kimmy knows, but who, who manages the OPEB trust fund? Um, currently, we put it in ICMA, a set uh, model, um, very competitive model. Um, but pension, we do have a um, finance advisor to to manage the pension assets. But, but who manages and who manages OPEB? OPEB? That's not where it's going to be. We just invested in ICMA. What well, what is that? Um, ICMA is. Is it an International <laughs> County Managers Association? No, it's, it's ICMA. Not going to be there anymore. ICMA RC for. Let's see, I'm online right now. It's a company called ICM, ICMA RC. That is our um, defined. That's our defined contribution plans as well. Yeah, hold on. I, I, I thought you said another name that does the defined contribution. It's just defined benefit. Yeah. Okay. It's international. 
It stands for International City and County Management Association. It uh, organization dedicated to the retirement needs of public sector employees. That's where it would go. Right. And what's the balance in that fund in terms of equities and bonds and that kind of thing? Don't know. Okay. I just, just, just. And it's like us with our retirement portfolios, you know. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just don't want to, I don't want anybody to think, I mean, if you're at 6% now, it could change next year, correct? I mean, right, it could go up. It could, it could go, it could go yeah. down. But the 6% is for the assumption. Right. Well, it, let me ask this question then. <clears throat> is there an, do we have to do this as part of the budget? Or can we do this later in the year if we, if we think we need more if information? We need to go to a machine vote. We have to go to a machine vote, right? Yeah. yeah. And we're already doing a machine vote. Machine vote for the budget. Why not do it all at once? Right. Is it one vote or two votes? It's one no, vote. Two items, one vote. Right, because it'll be part of the budget. It'll be the budget and then it'll be this one. No, no, no. You're saying two different things. You guys are saying two different things. It's one, one vote. Well, it's yeah, it's one vote coming out, but it's two two items on the vote. No, correct? No, that's not what you're saying. Well, no. the can include it within the budget, or it can be Oh, okay. That's right. But you're answering two questions. I mean, whether you put them together or apart, there's still two questions. No, it's one. You vote on the budget. It would be part of the budget. Yeah. But it doesn't have to be that way? Does it have to be that way? But we can ask the town attorney. I, I don't know. Uh, I believe that the Board of Selectmen is sending two recommendations to the Board of Finance, who will then put a package together to send to the town vote. Right. That's true. We have two items. Right. right. Okay. That's true because we we're still in discussion for the second motion, so we do have two motions, yeah. and it's in the time it goes to you guys, the board of finance will be able to determine. Yeah, we'll make our own adjustment. That's correct. Right. So board of finance has to approve this after we do. Correct. This is us sending it to the Board of Finance for their approval. It would be part of the package for public hearing. Right. It would be part of the package for public hearing for those who didn't hear that. Um, other questions, comments? All right. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. Opposed? No. Abstentions. Okay. Uh, again, second motion passes four to one. Okay. With Selectman Ballard uh, voting no in both cases. No one voted. See, now, if we can, let's go back to consideration of recreational and leisure services summer concerts. Do you want to do the, you're going to go back then further for the other? We already did the other. No, the conservation, we got to talk about that. Oh, we already did. Do you have somebody to add? Uh, no, I had, I had a question. There's a question as to... It's one person. Not two. We already added somebody. Oh, okay. So there's just one person in there. So there's Sally Ryder. Are you able to get Christine? Hi, uh, this is Christine. I, I sorry about that. I hopped on about two minutes after you started, um, so I got to hear oh, the no entire problem. board conversation. <laughs> um, all okay. right. So, Go ahead. Um, Yes, Granby Recreation and Leisure Services, we are requesting to partner with um, local production company, Rider, uh, Rider Productions. It's the same uh, group that we worked with to put on the Bluegrass Festival. And we are requesting permission to host what we're calling the Beats and Brews Summer Concert Series at Salmonbrook Park. 
Uh, there'll be six Saturdays in July, July and August. Um, they would begin at 3.30, would begin the setup, and they would conclude at 8.30 p.m. And we will be following all necessary steps to ensure that state laws relating to the sale of alcohol um, and consumption are adhered to. And that we're also complying with all of the state of Connecticut COVID guidelines to ensure a safe and comfortable environment. Um, since we are requesting the use of alcohol at the festival, we are keeping the park open. However, we are closing it to all structured slash scheduled activities. So what that means is um, we're not it's not a time of year anyways where we see baseball games or um, our pond is closed during that time. So I don't expect a lot of foot traffic on a Saturday night. Um, but just to be on the safe side, we're not scheduling anything else uh, when we're doing this event. Um, and I will open it up to Sally who can provide um, further details on the event uh, if you need it. Sally? Yeah. So thank you all. Um, I'm uh, interesting times such as they are when I realized that um, we're not going to be able to do bluegrass this year. Uh, celebrate Granby, I think is still a question mark. You all know me through those events and um, are working together for those. So how do we contribute to the community and what do I have to offer? And it's my production company in doing this. So we look forward to a very COVID safe environment, comfortable and safe. And um, I think that we're going to have probably um, vendors that are happy, local businesses, If when we end at 8.30, that opens up the opportunity for people to overflow into local establishments. So we're kind of trying to open up in a COVID safe way during the summer of 2021. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll look for a motion before discussion. There is a proposed motion on the thing. Go ahead. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the Department of Recreation and Leisure Services enter into an agreement with Ryder Productions to put on the Sounds of Summer concert series for general over, overall use of alcohol during the festival from 3.30 to 8.30 p.m. in accordance with state land and the ordinance authorizing promulgation of rules and regulations of parks and following all state of Connecticut COVID-19 guidelines relating to the operation of outdoor events. There's a motion. Is there a second? Oh, hold on. Is there a second? Second the motion. Thank you. Discussion. Um, Christine, did is, you have something? Yes. I will just add one more thing. This is something that we're going to be charging for. It's not a free some Sounds of Summer concert series. Uh, this is a ticketed event, and all of the uh, tickets will be handled through Rider Productions. Okay. Thank you. So, okay. I, I just... Um, so there's there's nothing else going on for the whole month of July at the park that could because you seem to be taking a big chunk of the summer up and um, there's nothing there's no sporting events uh, going on not on Saturday nights we're only looking at six Saturday nights between three thirty and eight thirty p.m. Okay, and then what what are the economics to the town on this? Sure. Um, the Recreation Department has entered into a 15% revenue split with Ryder Productions. So um, I guess, Sally, if you want to talk a little bit more about that. Sure. Um, my company will take on all of the liability in terms of bringing on all the talent, all the logistics of that, all the production of that, managing any vendors in and out, all of the security, obviously working with um, Chief Rosenberg and the town the way that we always do. Um, and it's a very, very even, easy split that the revenue goes 15% to the town. We all do our best. We make the best of we can of our town, and we all make money from it in a safe environment. Thank you. Other questions from the board? Glenn or Mark? Uh, 
Yes, uh, it seems like we're trying to do two, if not three things in this uh, motion. Normally, we would vote on one on closing the park, and then two on voting permission, and three operating during the COVID guidelines. Um, you know, oh, I not made the motion, so I'm in favor of it, but it just seems more complex than the motions we normally do to approve the uh, Celebrate Grandy or any other event. The approval really the only... is just the alcohol. Um, we're not closing the park. We're keeping the park open, so we're not closing it like we normally would during um, anything that you've kind of approved before, like the Bluegrass Festival. So we are keeping it open. And then we, the, we have to follow for any outdoor event we do, any sort of event, a wedding, a summer concert, anything, we are subject to the state of Connecticut COVID guidelines. So the motion, I added all of that in there, but it's really approving the event and the use of alcohol during the event. Okay. And, uh, go ahead. Um, and, and then for liability, who, who takes on the liability? My company has taken on the liability of $2 million for each of the Saturdays, of which you're welcome to a copy of that. And um, Parks and Recreation has a copy of it already. And, and is there so we submit here yeah liability for the town yeah. because we own the property but and, and there's no issue with uh noise because it, you know it'll be every saturday there's we've never had or we, we've well, never had issues in the past correct well no. and we've had concerts have usually been on thursday nights and they've gone till 8 30 in the past in the summertime okay and just as a Other side, note, just, as a side, just as a side note, we've um, at Celebrate Granby, we've always notified the local um, uh, residents because of the fireworks, etc. But again, it was late and it was a little bit different. As Christine says, it's an 8:30 close. Mm -hmm. And we do plan on having a police officer, one if not two, depending on ticket sales, at this event. At this event. Right. Okay. Other questions? All right, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Motion carries. All right, moving on. Tell me in the jurors report budget operations. Kimmy? Yeah, so in your package, um, you. Uh, you will have the February 2021 uh, budget operation report. Um, so your first page, you see the chart. We are currently at uh, the end of February. We are currently at 100% collection rate. So on to the next okay. The revenue collection has been very uh, similar to to the last month when we presented. Um, except the uh, current current year taxes is at 101 percent, and auto supplement is at 104 percent. And to the next page, um, as you can see, the total collected is for. Uh, is at 94 percent. It's hard to hear. I'm sorry, could you repeat that? You cut out. Oh, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Um, where, where did I come out though? Where did I come out You were saying the percentage is 90 something. Oh, the, um, the, general, the general fund total revenue we receive um, at the end of February is at 94 percent. Okay. Any questions? Right. Any questions? No. Nope. So, on, so on to the expenditure, which is page four and page five. For the general government, uh, so far we're at 90%. Uh, nothing stand out in, nothing over budget. So far everything is within the budget. And the total general fund expenditure currently is at 72%. 72%. Okay. Questions? 
Just, just going back to the education cost sharing, we're, we're at 50%. Shouldn't we be at 75% by now? Um, now, because they, their first payment is in October, the second payment, 25% payment is in the October, the second payment of 25% is in January, and the remaining we will receive it in April. Oh, okay. Thanks. Uh, they only do three payments, 25%, 25%, and 50%. Mm, gotcha. Other questions? Thank you. Amy, do you want to do uh, department management notes? Yep, and um, on to your, um, two uh, in your package, you have two pages of the management notes from different departments. Okay. Let's see. Okay, here they are. Any highlights you want to go over? Um, currently, um, the town hall um, is still closed to the public by appointment only. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, let's see, just quickly reviewing. Yeah, most, uh, according to the other selectmen in other towns, Simsbury is the same way. Other towns are trying to do that based on uh, whatever the governor's requirements are. So, uh, any questions on management notes? Any? Uh, the, the only question is, um, it, it looks like we're getting about 106 million dollars from the one point trillion dollar um, spending package. Uh, have, how do we receive that or is, is there spending uh, restrictions or how, how does all that work? According to the letter, I re go ahead, Kim. I'm not sure your question Well, the uh, Congressman Larson had sent a letter saying that we're receiving, I believe it was 1.2 million uh, based on this COVID package that just passed and the Board of Ed is receiving uh, just over 550,000. Um, the stipulations as how it can be used, I have not seen yet. Um, I don't think at the time of the letter he knew what those stipulations are. Uh, there's plenty of rumors out there that it's going to be pretty restrictive of what the uh, money can be used for. But I think as soon as we find that out, um, or as soon as they decide, they will let us know. Have you heard anything different, Kimmy? No, um, same thing. Uh, they haven't decided um, the spending guideline. They haven't decided yet. So I think uh, they're okay. working with the Treasury Department to decide. And that's the last I heard of it. Okay. So it's kind of like check is in the mail, right? <laughs> I believe it when I see it. So, yeah, it's going to be in the mail. That's right. Uh, any other questions for Kimmy? Okay. Uh, moving on to first selectman report. Um, there is, I just want to bring it to folks' attention. If you could please contact your state representatives and state senators. The state of Connecticut is uh, um, looking into a property tax a state property tax which, which is equivalent to a 1% mill rate for homes uh, valued over 300000 um, That's a current bill. It's Senate Bill 171. And uh, again, it's a 1% mill rate um, for homes over 300000 So for example, a home uh, valued at 300000 would receive a $300 uh, 
state tax property tax bill um, in my opinion it's just another way for the state to to get money and I, I none of it goes to the towns and it's uh, I think irresponsible so want to bring that to folks attention uh, do any of the selectmen have anything to report uh, Mark or Glenn Thank you for asking. Nothing for me, Scott. No. Glenn? No. I'm sorry? No. No. Okay. Um, and I believe our student liaison um, at a basketball game tonight, so we wish him less. John, are you on there? Okay. So at this point, I will look for a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, abstention, motion carries. Thank you and good night.